All right, so uh, this is the uh, first assignment, and it's a data modeling assignment, right? Yeah, so what, what uh, this assignment is trying to uh, illustrate is uh, try to walk you through some of the process that uh, you might you might go through in a in a real in in, uh, in, a, in a real environment, right? A real work environment. Uh, in at the beginning of every project, uh, typically uh, there is a uh, there's a period where there uh, folks are gathering the requirements, right? We we interview with uh, a lot of folks, uh, with uh, a lot of the stakeholders, you know, who's who has any um, interest in this in this uh, project being built or application being built and it's our responsibility to identify who they are and listen to all their rambling most of their conversations will be irrelevant right it's a, it's our responsibility to identify what is relevant and what's not relevant right they, they might go on and on and on talking about things that we're not building right that have nothing to do with what we're building and that's fine right it's our responsibility to identify what is and what it's not right so so we are we are giving you a um, a piece of text at the bottom. Right here's the problem statement, and the problem statement is that uh, we are building something that looks like Blackboard, uh, but better. You know, we all hate Blackboard, uh, so we're building something that is uh, better than Blackboard. Uh, and uh, a lot of the requirements here uh, come straight from Blackboard. Uh, of you know, it allows you to uh, create courses, and and students can enroll, and you have. And a course is made up of of modules and and, um, and weeks and lessons and whatnot and all sorts of widgets that you can drag on top of the uh, on, onto the the screen. Uh, there's assignments. There's uh, exams. There's, there's a lot of things that uh, that that folks might be explaining to you what the application is. Yes. Uh, some of the most of the content is relevant. Some of it is not. Uh, and uh, and obviously the only way that you would know is that if you indeed are going back and forth with the uh, actual client, yes, uh, and uh, you know what are we actually building, right? And and usually the client will ramble on, uh, you know, we're building um, a blackboard, but they'll, they'll go on and talking about, you know, HR and finance, and they'll talk about other things that we're not building, right? Uh, so usually it's the responsibility of the either the business analyst uh, or you as a software developer to identify what is it that we are building, okay? Uh, and, uh, and typically, you, um, the, the, one of the techniques is to uh, to identify what it is that we're, we're building is is to take a look at for for the nouns, for listening for the nouns and the verbs. Uh, the nouns are going to be clues on on um, on what are the pieces of data that we are capturing, right? And uh, and 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 these nouns typically ha have some form of relationship between themselves, right? And usually, the verbs are going to be the clues on how these nouns are related to one another, right? What are the actions? The actions are. Uh, what relates uh, nouns amongst themselves. Uh, also, some nouns uh, are going to be describing other nouns, right? Or nouns will be describing parts of other nouns, right? And uh, and it's uh, it's it, it's uh, sometimes not clear when things are parts of others, right? Especially if you're unfamiliar with the domain, right? Now, this domain probably everybody's already familiar. Everybody has used Blackboard, uh, and 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 a lot of the nouns that you'll hear here are are very common. Everybody everybody knows about it. But if it's a domain that you don't know about, okay, uh, you would know that you know a particular noun is actually part of some other noun. Right? If if this were be you know chemistry or physics or astronomy or whatever, right, you might not be familiar with it, with all these nouns and adjectives, yes, and you would not know that certain things are pieces of other things or something is describing something else. So as far as you're concerned, everything is as important as anything else. You know, you don't you don't know that anything is subordinate to anything else. Yes, uh, so uh, so if you tr start uh, uh, modeling uh, this piece of data, typically uh, everything becomes a class. Everything is a class, of, of a uh, uh, a very important noun, right? Not until many many iterations with uh, and a lot of feedback from your client and learning about the domain, you realize that certain certain uh, uh, nouns are actually attributes of other nouns. Yes. Uh, so, so the first class diagram that you might want to, that you will uh, probably create is a very naive class diagram, right? It'll be a very, very naive class diagram. And as you work through several versions of that class diagrams over time, you come up with a much more uh, uh, you know, realistic uh, class diagram that, that uh, captures uh, reality. So what we're asking here is first to go through this process. Right again, it'll it'll be a little artificial uh, because we don't really have a client. You won't have a chance to 
uh, go back and forth and uh, I mean not I mean you will through piazza yes but it's not ideal typically you you would interview and then you have another interview and then you have another interview yes and you'd be able to you know hash out what each thing is uh, but yeah so the first the first uh, is a, a list of candidate classes all the nouns list all every single noun right and uh, some of the nouns will be relevant some of them won't be right um, then uh, a list of all the verbs all the candidate uh, relationship between the classes. So all these nouns, right, will are potential classes, right, or potential tables in the database, right? Uh, eventually could be a, a table, but we don't know if it'll be a table or a field inside of a table. We don't know that, right? So naively, everything is a class to begin with. You know, but as you iterate over this, you'll say, oh, wait a minute, no, this is an attribute of this, right? Well, that's a property of that. Um, and the, uh, the, the verbs will give you the, uh, the relationship between them. Uh, also, generalization, you know, as a, a as you know, as applying some object-oriented analysis and design, you'll identify that that uh, that some of the well, some of the nouns are actually special cases of other nouns, right? Uh, you might say uh, you, you'll find, for instance, in the in the in the narrative, you'll find uh, faculties and you'll find students, right? Uh, and well, they're kind of the same type of they're they're probably both persons. Uh, they both have first names and last name and Social security number. We all pay taxes, uh, and and then but then they, each one might might have specific things about each other, right? Where a faculty might have some attributes that students don't, and vice versa, right? Maybe a, a student might have a, G, a GPA, which a faculty doesn't, unless a faculty is also a student. Uh, but and the way you might go about that is you you might have a top level class of a person, and then you might have inheritance, right? Where you capture students and faculties, right? Uh, where you capture everything that's common in your base class and then everything that is, is uh, specific. Uh, so we're asking you to capture all these generalizations, these specializations using inheritance. Uh, also associations and aggregations and compositions, uh, meaning that some of these classes might be uh, uh, related to one another, uh, are, are associated with one another, another uh, based on the life cycle, their life cycle, meaning that some, some of the uh, um, some of these nouns depend on the existence of some other nouns. That if some parent noun doesn't exist, then all the children don't exist, right? And some of them might not have might not have any life cycle dependency between them, right? Uh, like uh, uh, maybe you have a product, right? And and if I if I have an, an order, uh, the order is somehow associated with the products. You know, the order might say, well, I have you know some, uh, three of these products and two of those and, and five of those, right? And so they are they are associated with one another. Uh, but if I remove the, the order, the product still exists, regardless of whether the, the regardless of whether the order exists, right? The association they're associated, right? Um, but but some some um, uh, so we we call that uh, aggregation, right? That one is an aggregation of an order is an aggregation of multiple products. Yes, uh, some of them are compositions. Composition meaning things are made up of other things, and but if the whole doesn't exist, then the parts can't exist either, right? And, that, and, and those rules apply only to the way you understand the, 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 the model, right? You know, do you understand uh, that if I have an order, if I delete the order, do I also delete the products? Well, of course not. It makes no sense, right? Uh, but uh, uh, what if I, uh, if I have a, have a um, uh, representation of a page and that page, you know, a web page or, or some, 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 uh, some kind of uh, uh, representation of a screen and that screen has buttons and and, uh, and and scroll bars and whatnot. If I delete the, the, that, that screen, do I keep the buttons? Probably not, yes? So now that's a composition relationship, right? That there is a, there is a the children depend on the existence of the, of the parent. If the parent goes, the children go with it. That's very morbid, I'm sorry. Uh, then uh, we have uh, classes and attributes. Uh, you, uh, identify what, what the different classes are, perhaps some of the nouns are important enough that they are classes and some of the nouns are not as important, right? They're just attributes of a bigger class, yes? Uh, you, you need to identify that. So we wanna see the progression of going from a naive class diagram and different iterations, at least two iterations, right? Where you can then have the final class diagram. Now here's my naive class diagram, you know, uh, and then I decided that maybe these, these class, these nouns belong to that other noun. Here's my second version and here's my final version. All right, we like to see iterations of you thinking about, you know, why, why, why are things one or the other? 
Uh, also, make sure that you have the correct data types, whether they're dates, strings, integers, lists, arrays, enumerations, and whatnot. Uh, also, the cardinality uh, of uh, you know, determining how many of one are related to how many of the others. Right? You, um, you know, in, in a section, if, if, you, if you have many students enroll in a section, there's a one-to-many relationship between one section having many students. Yes? Actually, uh, that could be a many-to-many, -many, right? One section can have many students, and a student can be enrolled in many sections, right? So we'd like to know, you know, uh, what are the numbers of how many are related to how many, right? So, so we're asking for the cardinality. Uh, also, uh, uh, remove any inadequate uh, or redundant relationships. Um, so uh, remove inadequate and redundant relationships. So um, one of the things that we're going to be drilling you throughout the semester is redundancy. You know, eliminate redundancy. Redundancy breeds inconsistency, all right? Um, so, so, and this is not only in, in the relational databases, in any any uh, type of of, uh, of database. You know, whether it's Excel or it's JSON or or XML, or whatever, any data representation. Whenever you have redundancy, it breeds inconsistency, right? For instance, if I have two, you have two watches, right? And um, and I'm looking at them. Uh, they both, hopefully, they tell me the same time. Yes. And that's the whole point, right? That I, I, am, I have now a redundant source of information, right? That presumably, conceptually, they should be the same. And they should always be the same, right? Uh, but uh, one might be, you know, uh, 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 connected to the network and it always gives me the uh, right, correct time where the other one is, uh, I don't know if they sell, still sell the, <laughs> the ones where you have to uh, 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 turn the dial. Uh, eventually, they might drift from one another, yes? Uh, and at some point, I'm looking at them and says, and they're not giving me the same information for whatever reason, right? For whatever reason, they don't give me the same information. Conceptually, they should be the same, uh, but they're not for any reason. And now what happens is that I, I kind of don't trust either one. You know, do I trust one or the other? Uh, so whenever you have inconsistency, it really reduces the value of the data that you have stored, right? You don't trust your data anymore, right? So, so we have to try and avoid inconsistency at all costs. One of them is reducing or eliminating uh, redundancy. So, uh, so uh, one of one of the uh, steps is to identify. You know, if you have uh, some uh, some um, relationships between classes uh, that uh, could be, you know, there could be a query that could be answered some other way, right? Whenever you have a cycle in a class diagram, that's an immediate red flag, right? That says, wait a minute, you know, I could navigate my diagram from one one way following this particular path. Or I can follow this other path and, and have the same query, you know, the same the same results. So eliminate any redundant um, uh, associations. Uh, reify, uh, reify um, as we'll see uh, uh, in a bit. Uh, oftentimes, um, you know, the way you you capture the, the, the in the class diagram, um, it's perfectly fine conceptually, right? That, uh, but there are certain things that you can capture in a diagram that are not implementable in, uh, in whatever infrastructure you choose. In our case, is relational databases, right? Um, uh, for instance, in relational databases, you don't have um, inheritance. There's no way for capturing inheritance in a, in, a, uh, in a relational database, right? Although it's a very common thing to do in a class diagram, right? Or in, or in an object-oriented programming language, right? Class, class A inherits from class B. It's a very common thing to do. But there's that that concept is not translatable into a relational database, right? Uh, so so you uh, reifying, reifying is the uh, is a uh, is the steps by which you uh, try to implement uh, something that is way too complex or abstract and implement it in something that is much more concrete. Right? Real uh, reify literally means to make concrete, to make concrete something that is actually implementable. So, so yes, uh, uh, inheritance can be reified. There's a whole bunch of ways of implementing inheritance in, in relational databases. Many to many relationships are also not implementable in, uh, in uh, relational databases. There are, there are ways of doing it using mapping tables and so on and so forth. Uh, so this asks you to do that. And finally, pros, we were asking you to, as you go through all these steps, not necessarily in this order, uh, as you go through the steps of coming up with the the nouns and the verbs and the naive class diagrams and you reify and you remove certain classes, provide at least a paragraph 
right? At least a paragraph in well-written English. Uh, what is your thinking? What are, why are you doing this? Right? Don't just give me classes, diagrams, and, and this, is, this is the result, all right? You lose points like that. You know, we want some, some uh, thinking, right, of why are you doing that you think that you're doing, right? Even if it's not the right answer, if you have, if you have a very good argument, right, you'll, you know, we'll, we'll give you the points, right? Even if your class diagram is exactly not what we were looking for, right? If you have a, if you have a very well um, uh, defense uh, for your thinking, you know, we'll give it to you, okay? Again, uh, you know, because there's many ways of interpreting uh, the uh, uh, language, right? Um, we, you will not necessarily come up all, everybody with the same class diagram, right? And that's okay. Right, as long as you have a well thought uh, defense of what you're doing. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, so that's uh, assignment number one. 